Please, Adeze. Adane continued, her voice barely above a whisper. I need you to marry my husband and have a child for him. Adeze's eyes widened in shock at her sister's words. Her mind really... Once upon a time, in the little village of Akugeze, there lived two sisters named Adani and Adeze. They were not only sisters, but also the best of friends, sharing a bond so strong that people often mistook them for twins. Adani, with her gentle smile and kind heart, was the older sister while Adeze, full of energy and laughter, was four years her junior. Together, they lived with their loving parents and their playful younger brother, Chibuzo. Each day in Akugeze began with the rising sun, painting the sky in hues of orange and pink. Adane and Adeze would wake up early, their eyes still heavy with sleep, but their hearts eager to start the day. They would help their parents tend to the fields where the earth was rich and fertile, yielding bountiful fruits, yams, cassava, and vegetables. With their nimble fingers and cheerful spirits, the sisters worked tirelessly, planting seeds, pulling weeds, and harvesting the fruit of their labor. Despite the hard work, Adane and Adeze never complained. They found joy in the simple pleasures of village life, whether it was chasing butterflies in the middle or sharing stories under the shade of the mango tree. Their laughter echoed through the village, bringing smiles to the faces of all who heard it. Adane, pass me the hoe, Adeze would say, her voice ringing with excitement as she dug into the soil. Here you go, Adeze, Adane would reply, her eyes sparkling with mischief as she handed her sister the tool. Their parents watched with pride as their daughters walked side by side, their bond growing stronger with each passing day. They knew that Adane and Adeze were not only sisters, but also each other's pillars of strength, always there to lend a helping hand or a listening ear. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a golden glow over the village, Adane and Adeze would return home, their bodies weary, but their spirits lifted. They would gather around the fire with their family, sharing a meal of pounded yam and vegetable soup. Their laughter mingling with the crackle of the flames. Another day well spent, their father would say, his voice filled with pride as he looked at his daughters. Yes, indeed, their mother would reply, her eyes shining with love. Our girls are the pride of Apugese. And so, in the little village of Apugese, where the air was sweet with the scent of flowers and the sound of children's laughter filled the streets, Adane and Adeze continued to live their lives, their bond unbreakable, their love everlasting. For in the heart of every sister lies a treasure beyond compare, the gift of a friendship that will endure for all eternity. As the days turned into months and the months into years, Adane and Adeze blossomed into beautiful young women, their laughter filling the air like sweet music. With their radiant smiles and gentle hearts, they captured the attention of all who laid eyes upon them. Men from far and wide would come to Akugeze, drawn by the beauty and grace of Adane the elder sister. One by one, they would approach Adani, their hearts filled with hope and longing, asking for her hand in marriage. But each time, 
Adane would graciously decline, her eyes filled with determination. Her parents, puzzled by her refusal, would summon her and ask what troubled her. Why do you turn away these tutors, my daughter? Her mother would inquire, her voice tinged with concern. Do they not meet your standards? Adane would shake her head, her gaze fixed on the ground. It's not that, mother. She would reply, I just am not ready. Her father would sigh, his brow furrowed with worry. But Adane, you are a grown woman now. He would say gently, you cannot stay unmarried forever. Please, consider one of these tutors. They are all good men. But still, Adane remained steadfast in her decision. Her heart torn between duty and desire. For deep within her, she harbored a fear of leaving behind the sister she held so dear. The sister who had been her constant companion since childhood. One afternoon, as the sun dipped low in the sky and the shadows grew long, Adane and Adesi found themselves sitting beneath the shade of a majestic mango tree, its branches laden with ripe fruit. The air was filled with the sweet scent of mangoes, and the sound of bird song echoed through the forest. Adese looked at her sister, her eyes filled with curiosity. Adane, she began hesitantly, May I ask you something? Adane turned to her sister, a smile playing on her lips. Of course, Adese, she replied, you can ask me anything. Adese took a deep breath, summoning all her courage. Why do you keep turning away all your suitors? She asked, her voice soft but determined. Adane's smile faded, and she looked away, her heart heavy with guilt. It's because of you, Adesi, she confessed, her voice barely above a whisper. I don't want to leave you alone. Adesi's eyes widened in surprise, and then she smiled, reaching out to grasp her sister's hand. Oh, Adane, she said, you are not leaving me alone. You will always be part of my life, no matter where you go. Tears welled up in Adane's eyes as she looked at her sister, overwhelmed by the depth of her love. But what if, what if things change? She whispered. Adeze shook her head, her voice filled with conviction. Things may change, Adane, she said, but our bond will never break. We will always be sisters, forever and always. Adane felt a weight lift from her shoulders as she listened to her sister's words. For the first time in a long while, she felt a glimmer of hope in her heart. Perhaps, just perhaps, there was a way for her to find happiness without forsaking her beloved sister. Thank you, Adeze, she said softly, her voice trembling with emotion. Thank you for understanding. Adeze smiled, her eyes shining with love. That's what sisters are for, Adani, she replied. We are always here for each other, no matter what. And so, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the stars began to twinkle in the night sky, Adani and Adeze sat beneath the mango tree, their hands clasped together their hearts filled with love and gratitude, for in the bond of sisterhood, they had found a love that would endure for all eternity. As the days turned into weeks, and weeks into months, Adani found herself pondering her sister's words more and more. Adesa's gentle encouragement had planted a seed of hope in her heart, a hope that maybe, just maybe, there was a chance for her to find happiness without leaving behind the sister she loved so dearly. One sunny morning, 
Azadane was tending to the crops in the fields. A handsome young man named Ezedike approached her, his eyes shining with warmth and sincerity. Ezedike was a wealthy pan wine tapper who ran a successful pan wine store in their village. He had heard of Adane's beauty and kindness, and he had come to seek her hand in marriage. Adane's heart fluttered as she listened to Ezedike's earnest words. His voice filled with genuine affection. She knew that this was the moment she had been waiting for, the chance to take a leap of faith and open her heart to love. After much deliberation and soul-searching, Adane made the decision to accept Ezedike's proposal. Her heart swelled with gratitude as she thought of her sister Adese, whose unwavering support had given her the courage to follow her heart. When Adeze heard the news, her face lit up with joy, and she enveloped her sister in a tight embrace. I'm so happy for you, Adane, she exclaimed, her eyes sparkling with tears of happiness. You deserve all the love and happiness in the world. Adane smiled through her own tears, feeling a wave of gratitude wash over her. Thank you, Adeze, she whispered, I couldn't have done it without you. As the days passed, preparations for Adane and Ezedike's marriage began in earnest. The village buzzed with excitement as friends and family came together to celebrate the union of two souls destined for love. Adeze was by her sister's side every step of the way, her laughter and warmth filling the air with joy. On the day of the wedding, the sun shone brightly in the sky, casting a golden glow over the village. Adane stood before her father, her heart overflowing with love as she gazed into Ezedike's eyes. He took her hand in his, his thoughts sending a shiver of anticipation down her spine. With the blessing of her families and the cheers, of their friends ringing in their ears. Adane and Ezedike exchanged vows of love and commitment, pledging to stand by each other through thick and thin. As the ceremony drew to a close and the newlyweds prepared to depart for their new life together, Adane turned to her sister, her eyes brimming with tears. Adeze, she said softly, her voice choked with emotion. Thank you for everything. I will miss you more than words can say. Adeze embraced her sister tightly, her heart heavy with sadness, yet filled with pride. I will miss you too, Adane. She whispered, her voice trembling with emotion. But I know that this is the beginning of a beautiful journey for you. And remember, I will always be here for you no matter what. With one final hug and a promise to visit often, Adani and Ezedike bid farewell to their families and friends, setting off into the sunset hand in hand, their hearts filled with hope and anticipation for the future. As Adeze watched her sister ride off into the distance, tears streamed down her cheeks. She knew that this was the right path for Adani even if it meant saying goodbye for now. For in the bond of sisterhood, she knew that their love would endure, unbreakable and everlasting, no matter where life may lead them. As Adane stepped through the threshold of Ezedike's house, she couldn't help but feel a pang of sadness deep within her heart. The thought of leaving her family behind filled her with a sense of longing, but she knew that this was the beginning of a new chapter in her life, one filled with love and adventure. Ezedike led her into their humble home, a cozy hut adorned with colorful fabrics and sweet-smelling herbs. Adane's eyes widened in wonder as she took in the sight and sounds of her new home. Though small, it was filled with warmth and love, and she knew 
that she would soon come to cherish every moment spent within its walls. Life at Ezedike's house was unlike anything Adane had ever experienced before. Each day dawned with the promises of new adventures, and she found herself filled with a sense of excitement and joy. Together with her husband, she would tend to the palm wine store, their laughter ringing out through the village like music. Adeze would often come to visit, her presence bringing a ray of sunshine into their home. Adane would greet her sister with open arms, her face lighting up with happiness at the sight of her beloved sibling. Adeze, she would exclaim, pulling her sister into a tight embrace. It's so good to see you. Adeze would return the hug with equal fervor, her eyes sparkling with joy. I have missed you, Adane, she would say, her voice filled with love. How have you been? And so, the sisters would spend hours catching up, sharing stories and laughter as they reminisced about their childhood days. Adane, would regale Adeze with tales of her new life with Ezedike, describing the beauty of their home and the love they shared. I'm so happy for you, Adane, Adeze would say, her heart swelling with pride. You deserve all the happiness in the world. Adane would smile, her heart overflowing with gratitude. I'm happy, Adeze, she would reply, her voice filled with sincerity. But I miss you terribly. Adeze would reach out and take her sister's hand, squeezing it gently. I miss you too, Adane, she would say softly. But remember, no matter where life may take us, our bond will always remain unbreakable. And so, as the days turned into weeks, and the weeks into months, Adane's love for Ezedike grew stronger with each passing day. He showered her with affection and kindness, taking care of her every need with unwavering devotion. Adane, in turn, never took his love for granted. She would cook him delicious meals, tend to their home with care, and shower him with affectionate gestures. Together, they created a life filled with love, laughter, and happiness. And through it all, Adeze remained a constant presence in their lives, her love and support serving as a beacon of light in their darkest moments. For in the bond of sisterhood, Adane knew that she had found a love that would endure for all eternity, a love that would carry her through even in the toughest of times. As the years passed, Adane's heart grew heavy with a burden she could not bear alone. Despite her love for Ezedike and their life together, there was one thing missing, a child to call their own. Try as they might, Adane and Ezedike found themselves unable to conceive. Their dreams of starting a family, slipping further and further away each passing day. Ezedike Never once complained, his love for Adane unwavering in the face of adversity. But Adane couldn't shake the feeling of sadness that weighed heavily on her heart. She longed to hold a child in her arms, to feel the warmth of a tiny hand in hers. But it seemed that fate had other plans. To make matters worse, Ezedike's mother would often visit their home, her presence a constant reminder of their struggle. She would berate Adani, her words like dagger piercing through her heart. Why have you not given me a grandchild yet? She would demand, her voice sharp with frustration. Are you not a woman? Are you incapable of bearing children? Ezedike, would always come to his wife's defense. His voice calm but firm as he stood up to his mother. Mother, please, he would say, his eyes pleading. Adane is my wife. 
and I love her dearly. She's not to blame for her situation. But his mother would not be swayed. Her words caught in deeper with each passing day. Adane felt like a failure, her inability to conceive, a constant source of shame and sorrow. In her darkest moments, Adane would seek solace in the arms of her sister Adeze. She would visit her parents' house, tears streaming down her cheeks as she poured out her heart to her beloved sister. Why me, Adeze? She would cry. Her voice choked with emotion. Why can't I give Eze Dike the one thing he desires most? Adeze would hold her sister close, her own heart breaking at the sight of her pain. Shh, Adane. She would whisper, her voice soothing. It's not your fault. Sometimes, things happen that are beyond our control. But we must have faith that God has a plan for us, even if we cannot see it. Adani would cling to her sister's words like a lifeline, finding comfort in the knowledge that she was not alone in her suffering. Together, they would pray for guidance and strength, their bond of sisterhood providing a source of light in the darkness. But despite her outward appearance of strength, Adani would often find herself crying herself to sleep at night. Her tears, a silent testament to the pain that weighed heavily on her heart. And as she lay beside her sleeping husband, she would wonder if their love would ever be enough to overcome the trials and tribulations that life had thrown their way. As the years stretched on, and Adani's longing for a child grew stronger. She found herself consumed by a sense of desperation. She could no longer bear the weight of her sorrow alone. And so, she turned to her husband, Ezedike, for solace and support. My husband, she whispered one night, her voice trembling with emotion. I can't do this anymore. I need to find a solution. Ezedike looked at his wife, his heart breaking at the sight of her pain. He knew that he would do anything to ease her suffering, no matter the cost. And so, with a heavy heart, he agreed to accompany her on a journey in search of hope. Together, they traveled far and wide, seeking answers from herbalists, local doctors, and even witch doctors. They visited sacred rivers and holy shrines, hoping that somewhere, somehow, they would find the cure they so desperately sought. But no matter where they went or how hard they searched, they could not find the solution they were looking for. Adana's heart grew heavy with despair, her faith shaken to the core. Maybe the gods have forsaken me. She whispered to Ezedike one night, her voice barely above a whisper. Maybe I am meant to live out my days without the joy of motherhood. Ezedike wrapped his arms around his wife, holding her close as she cried. Don't lose hope, my love, he said, his voice filled with reassurance. We will find a way, I promise you. But as the days turned into weeks, and the weeks into months, Adane's despair only deepened. She felt like a failure. Her inability to bear a child, a constant source of shame and sorrow. One day, Ezedike's mother came to visit, her presence casting a shadow over their home. She looked at Adane with disdain, her eyes filled with judgment. Ezedike, she said sharply, turning to her son, you are my only child and I cannot allow you to destroy your life for the sake of a barren woman. Ezedike's heart sank at his mother's words, but he stood firm in his resolve. Mother, he replied, his voice steady, 
I love Adani with all my heart and nothing will ever change that. His mother's eyes flashed with anger as she shook her head in disbelief. You are a fool, Ezedike. She spat, her voice dripping with venom. If you won't find a new wife, then I will find one for you. But Ezedike would not be swayed. His love for Adane unwavering in the face of adversity. He knew that their journey was far from over and that together they would find a way to overcome the obstacles that stood in their path. As the moon hung low in the sky, casting a glow over the world below, Adane lay awake in bed, her heart heavy with sorrow. Tears streamed down her cheeks as she thought of the pain she had caused her beloved husband, Ezedike, and the burden she bore as a wife unable to bear a child. The sound of her sobs roused Ezedike from his slumber, and he sat up in bed. Her eyes filled with concern. Adani, my love, he whispered, reaching out to gently wipe away her tears. Why are you crying? Adani looked at her husband, her voice trembling with emotion. I, I feel like I have failed you, she admitted, her words barely above a whisper. I am not able to give you the one thing you desire most, a child. Ezedike's heart ached at the sight of his wife's pain, and he pulled her close, holding her tightly in his arms. Adani, listen to me, he said, his voice filled with love. I did not marry you for the sake of children. I married you because I love you, with all my heart and soul. Adani looked up at her husband, her eyes filled with gratitude. But I want to give you everything, she whispered, her voice choked with tears. I want to make you happy. Ezedike brushed a strand of hair from her face, his heart overflowing with love for his wife. You already do, Adani, he replied, his voice filled with sincerity. Your love is all I need. But Adani could not shake the feeling of guilt that weighed heavily on her heart. She knew that her inability to bear a child was a source of pain for both her and Ezedike, and she longed to find a solution no matter the cost. Please, Ezediki, she said, her voice trembling with desperation. I need you to do me a favor. Ezediki looked at his wife, his brow furrowed with concern. What is it, Adane? He asked, his voice gentle but firm. Adane took a deep breath, selling herself for what she was about to say. I want you to marry a new wife. She said softly, her voice barely above a whisper, but not just anyone. I want you to marry my sister, Adeze. Ezedike's eyes widened in shock at his wife's words, his mind struggling to comprehend what she was asking of him. Adane, no, he replied firmly, his voice filled with conviction. I could never marry another woman, especially not your sister. But Adane persisted, her heart breaking at the thought of losing her husband's love. Please, Ezedike, she begged, her voice trembling with emotion. I can't bear the thought of being a burden to you any longer. If you marry Adeze, we can have the family we have always wanted. Ezedike's heart clenched at the desperation in his wife's voice and he reached out to cup her face in his hands. Adani, he said softly, his voice filled with tenderness. I could never love anyone as I love you. You are my heart, my soul, my everything. I will never leave your side no matter what. But Adani's resolve was unwavering. Her tears falling like rain as she looked into her husband's eyes. As a decay, she whispered, her voice barely audible. If you won't marry Adeze, 
then I will have no choice but to leave this house. Your mother will never accept me, and I can't bear the thought of being thrown out like a common servant. Ezedike's heart shattered at the thought of losing his wife, and he pulled her close, holding her tightly in his arms. No, Adani, he said firmly, his voice filled with determination. I will never let you go. If marrying Adeze will make you happy, then so be it. I will marry her. And so, as the moon hung low in the sky and the stars twinkled overhead, Adane thanked Ezedike for agreeing to marry her sister. One afternoon, as the sun dipped low in the sky, Adane invited Adeze to her home for a meal and a chat. They laughed and reminisced about their childhood days. The warmth of their bond filling the room like sunshine. But as the hours passed, Adane's demeanor grew somber. Her eyes clouded with sadness. Finally, unable to contain her emotions any longer, Adane opened up to her sister, her words heavy with desperation. Adeze, she began, her voice trembling with emotion. There is something I need to ask of you. Adeze looked at her sister, her heart pounding in her chest. She could sense the seriousness in Adane's tone, and she braced herself for what was to come. Please, Adeze. Adane continued, her voice barely above a whisper. I need you to marry my husband and have a child for him. Adeze's eyes widened in shock at her sister's words, her mind reeling with disbelief. She couldn't fathom the idea of marrying her sister's husband, let alone bearing a child for him. I... I don't understand, Adane. Adeze whispered, her voice barely audible. This is... it's too much, Adane. But Adane begged her sister to consider her request, her heart breaking at the thought of losing her husband's love. She pleaded with Adeze to save her marriage, to give Ezedike the family he has desperately desired. Please, Adeze, Adane whispered, tears streaming down her cheeks. I can't bear the thought of losing him. Please, say you will do this for me, please, my sister. Adeze felt a wave of guilt wash over her as she looked into her sister's tear-filled eyes. She knew that she could not refuse her sister's plea, no matter how difficult it may be. Take your time, Adeze. Adane said, her voice filled with gratitude, but oh, please, don't say no. As Adeze left her sister's house, her heart heavy with the weight of Adane's request, she knew that she had a difficult decision to make. She returned home to her parents, her mind swelling with confusion and uncertainty. Adeze, what's wrong, my child? Her mother asked, concern etched in her voice. Adeze took a deep breath, stilling herself for what she was about to say. Adane asked me to marry her husband and have a child for him. She confessed, her voice trembling with emotion. Her parents looked at her in shock, unable to comprehend the gravity of her sister's request. But after a moment of silence, they spoke, their voices filled with love and understanding. Adeze, my dear. Her father said gently, Sometimes we are called upon to make sacrifices for the ones we love. Your sister is in need, and if this is what she asks of you, then perhaps it is what you must do. Adeze nodded, her heart heavy with sorrow but filled with determination. She knew that she could not refuse her sister's plea, no matter how difficult it would be. I will do it. She said softly, her voice filled with resolve. For Adani, I will do anything. And so, as the days turned into weeks, Adeze prepared herself for the sacrifice she knew she must make. Adeze made the difficult decision to honor her sister's request, knowing that it would change the course of their lives forever. Soon after, Ezedike married her, and Adane 
welcomed her sister into their home with open arms, showering her with love and kindness. At first, Adane was overjoyed to have Adese by her side, grateful for her sacrifice and the prospect of finally having a child in their home. Soon, Adese became pregnant, and as Adese's pregnancy progressed, Adane's feelings began to change. Jealousy and resentment crept into Adane's heart, clouding her judgment and poisoning her love for her sister. She couldn't bear to see Ezedike show any affection towards Adese, feeling as though her place in his heart was being threatened. One day, Adese mustered the courage to confront her sister, her heart heavy with sorrow at the change in their relationship. Adane, she said softly, her voice trembling with emotion. Why have you turned against me? What have I done to deserve this? But instead of receiving an explanation, Adese was met with a slap across the face. The sting of her sister's betrayal cutting deep into her soul. She recoiled in shock, tears welling up in her eyes as she realized the depth of Adane's hatred towards her. From that day on, Adeze felt like an outcast in her own home, her sister's animosity casting a dark shadow over their once loving relationship. She tried to keep to herself, seeking solace in the growing life within her womb, but the pain of her sister's rejection weighed heavily on her heart. Meanwhile, Ezedike's mother noticed the tension brewing within their home and confronted her son urging him to fulfill his responsibility as a husband and take care of his pregnant wife. Ezedike's eyes were opened to the truth of the situation, and he realized that he had neglected Adeze in his pursuit to please Adane. With a heavy heart, Ezedike resolved to make amends and take care of Adeze, as he should have from the beginning. His actions only fueled Adane's anger as he saw her husband's attention shift towards her sister. One day, Adane confronted Ezidike, her voice filled with venom, and she demanded that he stop caring for Adeze. I will not tolerate this any longer. He spat, her eyes blazing with fury. If you continue to show her affection, then I will leave this house. But instead of bowing to her demand, Ezidike stood tall, his love for Adeze outweighing any fear of losing his wife. If you choose to leave, then so be it. He replied calmly, his voice firm, but know this, I will not stand by and watch you mistreat your own sister. You asked me to marry her and now I will fulfill my duty as her husband. Adane was stunned into silence by her husband's words, realizing that she had pushed him too far. Feeling like she had lost everything, she retreated into their heart, her heart filled with bitterness and resentment towards her sister. As her days they continued to carry the burden of her sister's child, she prayed for strength and forgiveness, knowing that her sacrifice had come at a great cost. And as the days passed, she held on to the hope that one day their family would find peace and reconciliation and their love would conquer all. One fateful day, as Adeze reached for a pot of food, Adane's jealousy and resentment boiled over, leading her to push her sister to the ground in a fit of rage. Adeze cried out in pain, her heart breaking at her sister's betrayal. When Ezedike learned of what had transpired, he was filled with disappointment and anger towards Adane. He warned her sternly that if anything happened to his child or Adese, she would face the consequences of her actions. Adane felt a pang of remorse wash over her, realizing the gravity of her actions. With a heavy heart, she approached Adese tears streaming down her face as she begged for forgiveness. 
Adeze, with a heart full of compassion, forgive her sister, embracing her tightly in a gesture of love and reconciliation. Months passed, and Adeze gave birth to a beautiful baby girl, filling their home with joy and laughter. Adane was there every step of the way, taking care of their new baby with all the love and tenderness in her heart. As the baby girl grew, Adane and Adeze showered her with affection, watching her as she blossomed into a bright and happy child. And then, after years of waiting and longing, happiness finally found its way into Adane's life as she discovered that she was pregnant. The news spread like wildfire, filling their home with excitement and anticipation. And in no time at all, Adane welcomed a bouncing baby boy into the world, her heart overflowing with love for her precious son. Ezediki beamed with pride as he held his newborn son in his arms, feeling grateful for the blessings that had come his way. He looked at his wives with love and gratitude, knowing that they had stood by him through thick and thin. As the years passed, their family grew and flourished, their home filled with the laughter of their children and the warmth of their love. Adani and Adeze stood side by side, their bonds stronger than ever as they watched their children grow into beautiful and loving individuals. And as they looked upon their growing family with pride and joy, they knew that their journey had come full circle and that they had found happiness and fulfillment in each other's arms. As Adike's mother, seeing the love and harmony that now filled their home, approached Adane with tears in her eyes, begging for forgiveness for the pain she had caused her. Adane, with a heart full of forgiveness, embraced her mother-in-law, knowing that the past was behind them and that they had all grown and changed for the better. And so, with love and forgiveness in their hearts, Ezidike and his wife, along with their precious children, lived happily ever after. Their story, a testament to the power of love, forgiveness, and the enduring bond of family. This story teaches us about the power of forgiveness, love, and sacrifice. Adane and Adeze's bond shows us that family is important, and even when things get tough, sticking together, and supporting each other can help overcome any challenge. It also reminds us that jealousy and resentment can cause harm, but apologizing and making amends can heal relationships. Ezedike's love for his wives and children demonstrates the importance of standing by your loved ones, no matter what. Overall, the story teaches us to cherish our family, forgive each other's mistakes, and always be there for one another. Thank you for watching this amazing story about Adani and Adese on African Stories. If you liked it and felt inspired with your journey, please show your support by clicking the like button, sharing with your friends, and leaving a comment below. To see more interesting stories and learn about different cultures, subscribe to African Stories and don't forget to ring the notification bell so you never miss a new story. Your support means a lot and helps us bring more stories to you. Until we meet again, stay connected, stay inspired, and keep smiling.